So this is going to be a summary of my lupus symptoms so far. Uh, I say so far because I'm 55 now. It's been 10 plus years and I hope I have a long way to go. That would be great because I want to be there when my grandbabies get married and graduate from college and all those things. But I'm not going to go into detail on each symptom. I'm going to go point by point and just kind of skim over each one and whether or not I still have it, if the symptoms are severe, how bad they are, when I'm in a flare, that kind of thing. And subsequent videos will get more in depth on each symptom. Honestly, if I didn't, this video would be three hours long. <laughs> it's a lot of symptoms. I actually understand why people don't believe us. Honestly, I, I understand. When I was writing this down, because I had to write this down because there was no way I was going to remember all this. There was no way. But when I was writing this down, I'm thinking, geez, no wonder people look at you like you're crazy. They look at us like we're crazy because one, one flare, we have a symptom. The next flare, we don't. In between flares, we still have symptoms, even though we're not in a flare. Well, I thought you only had one. No, it's not just when I'm in a flare. The pain is all the time. It's just how severe is it? How bad are my kidney issues? How bad is... Uh, it's hard to explain to people. And you don't want to explain it to people. I don't want to explain it to people. I don't want to think about it. And I shouldn't have to explain it to people. Most of my friends, family, and loved ones don't expect me to explain it to them. Basically, if I say I'm in pain or I'm not having a good day, we leave it at that. But I can understand why people who don't get this can think we are absolutely batty. Anyway, um, let's see. Oh, and I'm also not going to get into medications because... Your doctor, my doctor, your way of healing yourself, your way of caring for yourself, and my way of caring for myself may be very different. And I am not going to play the game of you're doing it wrong. I don't really want to see it in the comments, and I will probably delete comments that pertain to medications and whether or not people are doing their medications correctly or not. Um, I was in some groups on Facebook that got really ugly, and I had to leave the groups because people weren't doing it the way other people thought they should. And it was, it was very mean. It, it got very dog eat dog. And I'm like, we're supposed to be supporting each other. So, uh, let's see. Let's list, 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 list. Um, early undiagnosed signs. I had a face rash. I had it on my cheeks, on my face, up all up in here and really bad along my chin line. I haven't seen other people have that, but I did. And my daughter, she swears up and down. That's when she first started seeing symptoms. And I'm going to say, okay, we'll go with that. And that was at least 15 years ago, if not longer. I always had body pain, but I stood for a living. I was a florist. So I stood all day. I worked very hard. I wasn't a lazy person. So I did a lot of work and I was in pain. I would wake up after holidays and I was in pain. So I just assumed my pain had something to do with my job, but I'm thinking maybe it didn't. What forced me to go to the doctor? Acute asthma. I didn't have asthma since I was a kid. I was doing really, really well. My mom smoked when I was a kid and I had issues, but it kind of went away. So I didn't think about it until all of a sudden, boom, I started having really, really severe asthma attacks. I mean, I was terrified. I couldn't breathe. And that old commercial, you know, nothing else matters when you can't breathe is absolutely correct. It is terrifying. And um, I had to go to the doctor and say, look, I don't know what's going on. I haven't had this in years. I don't have prescriptions for this stuff, but it's back tenfold. But we addressed the symptoms. We did not address why all of a sudden I'm sick again. Why all of a sudden it popped up? Is it something in my house? What, what's going on? I didn't know. Now I'm pretty sure this has something to do with it. Although I don't really have symptoms anymore. If I do, it's chemically induced. I'm very sensitive now to anything, which I didn't used to be any kind of bleach chemicals. Um, my husband was welding one day and it got into my lungs and it just set me off and I couldn't come out of it. So chemicals have a lot to do with that. Um, weakness and fatigue. I wanted to say that it wasn't so severe, but it really kind of was because I would get through half a day of work and I was exhausted and that wasn't normal for me. So what do I do? What everybody else does, I go get another Diet Coke. But the weakness and fatigue, um, escalated to the point where I would get exhausted just going from room to room. That wasn't normal. And I knew something else was wrong. And I finally went to the doctor and told him, I'm not okay. Something is wrong. And it wasn't just your average 
tired. It was, it felt like I weighed 600 pounds if I knew how that felt, but that's how it weighed. Like just getting up out of the bed was like, who am I pulling up besides myself? This is crazy. And I felt a little crazy, but I thought, okay, I'm going to the doctor anyway. He makes me go twice a year. So I might as well tell him and get it on my record. And he just did kind of look at me a little funny and he wrote it down. We did blood tests. We did extra blood tests. We did blood tests on top of blood tests. But that's a long story and I'll go into that later. Um, strength, the weakness part. I used to be the kind of person that could open the jar of pickles that nobody else could because we work with our hands all day as floors. We use wire cutters, bolt cutters, scissors, snips. We're constantly holding on to bunches of flowers with one hand so that we can wrap them with the other hand and we're pressing and pulling and all these things. My hands were super strong and all of a sudden out of nowhere, I couldn't open anything. I couldn't even hold a, a glass. I went from using regular plates and regular pots and pans to paper plates and plastic cups and I wouldn't use any kind of heavy pans anymore, I would get the lightest pan pot or bowl we had and that's what I would use. I started finding ways of doing things so that it didn't hurt because it would make me tired and it would hurt. Cast iron, that wasn't happening. Cast iron was my nemesis and we have a lot of it. In Southern Louisiana, if you don't cook some foods in cast iron, you're doing it wrong. But I, I just don't cook those anymore. I let my husband do it. And he can clean the pan, too, if he wants to use it. That's right. I told him he could do it himself. Okay, so that's the weakness and fatigue. Oh, do I still have it? Yes, I still have it all the time, even when I'm not in a flare. And yes, it is worse when I'm in a flare. I mean, I will try to go from one room to another and have an uncontrollable urge to fall down. <laughs> And that's not fun. I'm having to hold on to walls going from room to room. I won't go shopping because I'm scared I'm going to fall down. Let's see. Joint pain. Yeah, that's a fun one. Lots of joint pain. I'm going to insert a picture of my fingers here. So you can see how my fingers look. It's osteo, not rheumatoid. I was tested. And he was shocked that it wasn't rheumatoid and he was like man if it looks like a deer and it sounds like a deer and it, it's got to be a deer it's not a zebra and I was a zebra he couldn't believe it my hands are in really bad condition and he took some x-rays and a lot of my joints were in bad condition and he was just shocked at my age this started my hands started getting messed up in my late 20s early 30s so for my joints to be as bad as they were as young as I was he was really really shocked it wasn't rheumatoid but it wasn't still really painful and that's probably two videos right there because it's it's been a long road with my joints kidneys hurting that was a biggie I thought it was my back but then I realized when I would touch my back my back muscles didn't hurt it wasn't pressing on the muscle didn't hurt it was deeper than that so when I told the doctor about it he ran some extra blood tests and some urine tests and sure enough my kidney function was not great. I was told um, start drinking your water or you're gonna end up on dialysis. I drank my water. I drink a lot of water and if I don't drink enough water my body lets me know. Um, swelling, pain in my back, I know right away before I even look in the toilet because yes I am one of those people who checks that because that's one of the indications if the pain doesn't hit me first um, I will notice it when I go to the bathroom that it's darker than normal and I will up my liquid level. Usually that happens when I don't feel well or I'm really busy and I forget to drink basically. So I usually keep something around where I will drink on a regular basis. I set alarms on my phone to remind me to drink if I'm on the road or we're doing stuff because I will forget to drink. If the, the thirst doesn't hit me, I will go too, too long without drinking and I will pay for it later. If I'm drinking enough, I'm okay, but I can still swell. If I sit for too long, I don't move enough, it'll still hit me. Um, I have learned that counterintuitively, I need to drink whether I'm swollen or not. That's how I clear my kidneys out. That's how I flush them. And you know, people will say, well, you don't wanna drink a lot, you're already swollen. No, I need to flush my kidneys. That's just me everybody's their own person but for me 
I can flush my kidneys if I drink enough water and I move around and I get my lymphatic system to do its thing, I can get that all flushed out, which is difficult when you're on the road, just saying. That's its own video. Um, so yeah, the swelling part, that's, that's hand in hand with the kidneys and all of that. I do still have it. It's on and off. They go hand in hand and it's worse when I'm in a flare. Nerve issues. Wow, that was a biggie. I did not expect that. In all the things that I looked up, I see it now when I look up lupus and symptoms, but I didn't see it when I first started learning about lupus. Nervous system issues didn't come up. Um, I don't know if it's just something they're starting to learn about, but yeah, I definitely started having them. When I get tired, overly tired, I work too hard, or um, I get really busy and I do too much, or I get stressed out. The symptoms can be anything from shaking to seizures, and I get confused. The shaking is usually, oddly enough, just my right side. I will have like tremors in my hand and I'll, you know, try to hide them from people because it's embarrassing. So I'll kind of hold my hand or try to put it under my leg so it won't show. But it's, um, it's one of my first signs that I need to calm down or I need to go sit down and rest and calm my brain and let my brain settle for a little while. If I don't listen to my body, I will end up with seizures. And they're not your typical seizures. For me, anyway, they are more like a blackout. Like somebody can be talking to me and I'm not seeing you. I'm looking right through you. And um, I just kind of have to wait for them to pass. Uh, they don't hurt. I don't generally just fall down or anything. I know ahead of time I get kind of like, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I, it's like I don't have a depth perception. <laughs> I know this is going to sound insane. But I will go to reach for something because I know that I'm about to go down and I will reach for something and I don't always see it. And I'm feeling for things and I have fallen and I've hurt myself because I missed whatever it was I was reaching for not to fall down. So now when it happens, I try to just sit wherever I am. If I know something's going to happen, I just sit. Or I know I'm not feeling well and I, this could happen to me, I will just stay seated and I will hold on to things all the time to make sure that I always have something near me so I don't go down. Does it always succeed? No, there's times I go down anyway, but I try. I do, I try. Um, let's see, I still have them. And yeah, they are on and off. It's mostly when I overdo and it is worse when I'm in a flare. It's more likely to happen when I'm in a flare, whether I overdo or not. Sometimes just getting out of bed can cause it to happen. And um, I refuse to stay in the bed. So my chances of it happening increase when I'm in a flare. Hyper skin sensitivity. That was a weird one too. Um, how do I put this? It's like I'm the princess and the freaking pea. Except it's more like if there's a hair. <laughs> this is going to sound nuts. If there is a hair in my clothing or in the bed, it will drive me batty. I have to check my clothes before I put them on. And sometimes during the day, I have to go find a bathroom and take my shirt off and find out where that hair is because there is in my a hair in my shirt somewhere and it will drive me crazy until I find it. It's like a tickling, itching feeling and it can be the littlest hair on the outside of my clothing and I can find that sucker. I know it's there, it's driving me crazy and I won't give up until I find it. And there's always one there, always. Also, um, the sensitivity goes on to, I don't know if they're hand in hand, but it's a cramping. Um, I have up my magnesium for this and it does help. I also get magnesium lotion. And if I'm having bad cramps, it'll help with that. But I can't wear anything tight anymore. Um, bras, underwear. I used to be the kind of person that didn't leave the house without spandex on. And now I'm terrified to wear spandex because when I wear anything that's too tight, I cramp. It feels like Charlie horses wherever it's tight. I can't wear a belt, um, nothing that's that's too snug. So at one time where I couldn't leave the house without feeling naked without spandex on, I now walk out naked all the time because there's just no way for me to wear it. I had to get used to not wearing it. And uh, that has been quite the um, adjustment to say the least. Hair loss, that was fun. Um, we're swimming about 10 years ago and my daughter looks at my hair when I come out of the water and she says, mama, 
your hair's so thin, what happened? And I'm like, I don't know. All my life, I have been told by people who did my hair, how thick my hair was, how much hair I had. So for my daughter to say, Ma, your hair is so thin on top, what's going on? I knew I had been finding an enormous amount of hair in my brush and, you know, the vacuum cleaner, but I just thought that was normal because I had a lot of hair. Obviously I was wrong. And um, I have started taking vitamins, that's another video. My mother-in-law did hair for 30 some odd years and she did tell me about some vitamins and encouraged me to take them and I have been and I do believe it's helping. I don't know, is it helping? Yeah, it's not as bad as it used to be. But I do lose a lot more hair when I'm in a flare. I notice a lot more in my brush. I notice a lot more just falling onto my shirt. And um, it's worse when I'm in a flare. But the vitamins are definitely helping. But I'll do that in another video and I will go over the particular vitamins that I take in that video. So, yes, I still have it. Yes, it's all the time. And yes, it's worse when I'm in a flare. My newest symptoms, oh, I'm actually getting to the bottom of this. The newest symptoms, um, the first one would be how I know I'm in a flare. It's really kind of weird because I'll start feeling like I have the flu, except I don't have the flu. I don't have a temperature, but I get that all over achy feeling you get when you have the flu. It's not my normal body pain. It's not my normal wake up in the morning and ow, 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 everything hurts. It's that fluy feeling. It's an, a body ache I can't explain other than I feel like I have the flu, but I don't. I also get congested, which I normally don't get congested anymore because I no longer drink milk. But when this flu thing comes on, I get congested. My lymph nodes swell up. And so my everything doesn't drain like it's supposed to. And I know it right away. I will wake up and my neck feels swollen. My sinuses are swollen. I get a migraine. It sucks. But I know, uh-oh, things may start getting really ugly really quick. And I try to mitigate the the... Um, symptoms ahead of time because now I have this warning sign that things are going to happen. So I try to do things to make it easier on myself. It's going to happen. There's no way I can make it not happen, but I can do some things and I will go into that in other videos that help the symptoms be less severe and it doesn't hit me as hard as it used to. So thank you, flu, not flu. Um, sun and heat. I didn't used to have issues with the sun like most people do. That didn't happen until a couple of years ago. I started having trouble with light sensitivity in my eyes. Um, it's worse when I come in or out of fluorescent lighting. If I'm in fluorescent lighting for a very long time, I end up with a headache. When I come out of a place like a store that has fluorescent lighting, I feel like I'm blind and it feels like somebody's pressing on my eyeballs. I can't see anything until my eyes adjust and sometimes my grandkids end up being my seeing eye children to get me to my car so I don't get hit. If, if they're not around, if I'm by myself, um, I just wait. I have to wait until my eyes adjust and it can take a couple of minutes and then I'll be able to see. And, and it's usually because Big Dummy forgot her glasses in the car. I always have some glasses on me. I just sometimes forget them in the car. I need to get some of those transitions, although people keep telling me that they don't get um, dark fast enough, so they may not help me. I don't know, but I'm, I'm thinking I might try them. I don't know. Um, also, the sensitivity to the sun is my skin. Um, I didn't have this at the beginning. This started about, I don't know, six or seven years ago. Uh, I go into the sun and even on an overcast day, if I go outside without some kind of protection, sunscreen, long shirt, hat, umbrella, you name it, I, I bring it all with me. Um, it feels like little tiny bee stings or somebody's taking a wire brush and going tick, 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 all over me with it. It doesn't hurt as much as it is super annoying and itchy and just ooh, relentless. And it's my warning sign. Get out of the sun, dummy. You don't have any protection on. <laughs> but I, I try not to use the sunscreen all over me. I try to put it on my clothes. Um, I can't put it on my face or I'll break out. So I try to wear hats. I try to do the, the covers in other ways. Um, my swimsuit looks like I'm going snorkeling or like I'm going scuba diving because I need to protect myself. Okay, so yeah, my swimsuits are real cute. Not if I want to go swimming, I'll wear them. 
the heat issue started uh, about the same time the sun issue happened. I noticed when I would take a hot bath or a hot shower, I would come out and need to lay down for about 20 minutes. And that still happens today. All of this still happens today. And yes, it's all worse when I'm um, in a flare. But the heat coming out of a shower just kind of shocked me. I'd never had trouble taking a shower before. And I used to be one of those people who liked to turn it up a little bit warmer, a little bit warmer, a little bit warmer, because it felt good on my joints. And I can't do that anymore because um, it makes me incredibly weak. And sometimes it makes me nauseous. Um, if I'm outside, I will overheat and it'll make me feel sick to my stomach. So I try to avoid the heat. I try to rest a lot when I'm in the heat. Um, keeping ice packs for the back of my neck helps a lot. I just try to stay out of the sun as much as possible, um, even if I have protection, because Louisiana heat hates me. And that's pretty much all the symptoms. There's probably stuff I forgot, but this stuff came to the surface when I started writing it down. So if I forgot something or if something comes up, I'll put it in a video. Uh, does any of this sound familiar? I'm sure it does. At least some of it. I mean, nobody has all the symptoms everyone else has. Everybody's different, so I get it. If you do have any of these symptoms or if you recognize any of this, you know, leave a comment below. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Um, if you have any suggestions of videos you'd like me to do, leave a comment below. I hope this was helpful. It actually felt good to get it all out. It's really a lot to try to tell people. It's so overwhelming. And I'm sure if you're going through it or you love someone who is going through it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And I hope that we can share experiences with each other and help each other get through some of these rough times. And I hope some of my future videos um, better explain some of the things that I've talked about in this video. And I will try to link those videos together once I get them up. And um, please leave suggestions for anything you want to know. Thanks.